So first off, I'll start by thanking all the awesome YouTubers who got me started in 3D printing and inspired me. So please check them all out. First thing I'm going to show you is a is the test print that came off my Ender 3 Pro. This lion, uh, I was pretty excited by it. Uh, and then I looked real close, I saw lots of layer lines, and I wasn't as excited, and I thought, let me hit this with some primer, maybe I'll fill it in, look a lot better. Hit it with some primer, I still saw huge lines and gaps everywhere, and I was a little not as excited as I thought. And then I showed it to my wife and kids, who were totally, thoroughly unimpressed by it. But that was back when I didn't even understand what layer lines were, or layer heights, or really know anything about it. Despite I had watched videos, I was too excited and wasn't paying attention to all the settings, and it was the stock test print, so I did it. So I was worried all my prints were going to look like that. Then after I watched some of the videos again from those YouTubers I mentioned, uh, I went and printed out my next thing, which was a basilisk. And this basilisk... I thought came out really amazing. This was the first thing I printed where I was shocked that it came off my printer, how nice it was. As you can see, this is a very close-up high-res picture. You really can't see the layer lines that clearly, and you'll see I show it painted coming up soon where you can see the lines better because I, I did a wash, and a wash brings out those layer lines, but it looked pretty good. And I was, now I was like, whoa, this is pretty good. And I still didn't know what I was doing. I still had some failures. Um, even though I watch videos on bed leveling, it is an art learning how to precisely level your bed. And even now, when my bed gets out of level sometimes, I might have 10 failed prints in a row before I get it perfectly leveled where it's working absolutely perfectly again. It's just a reality of the machine. Uh, as part of this review, everyone should know this printing itself is a hobby. It will take time. It will take time for you to dial it in. Once you dial it in, it becomes a lot more routine. Routine. Like my Ender now pumps out, I'm pumping out terrain these days, and it, it goes you know a month or two without any issue at all before something goes wrong and I have to re-level the bed or you know change something or fix something or whatever. It, it's pretty reliable. So here this basilisk is painted up, and you can see now the layer lines. But again, this is as if you were holding it you know an inch away from your face. You're looking at a high-res close-up photo. You look at this thing from two, three feet away, you actually can't see these lines at all. I'm being dead honest. I mean, it, it could pass for FDM printed when you're at tabletop distance. And that little goblin there, that is also FDM printed on my Ender 3. And look at it here. You can barely see lines. And from this distance, I don't, this distance you're looking, I don't even know if you can really see lines there. I mean, it came out great. And, and these profiles that I use are standard uh, Fat Dragon profile. Um, I actually use my own. I actually use the stock profile in the Ender 3 uh, in, in Cura, the extra fine. Here's my first stab at terrain. Didn't come out that good. Again, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, this is a picture of what you might see. Here you see little holes and drag lines. My nozzle was a little too close to the print, and it was dragging through the print. Here is that goblin painted on my next stab at terrain where you can see a lot of layer lines here. But again, this is looking at it from like an inch away effectively. Uh, and here's that goblin again, super high close up. And you don't see that many lines on him. And detail looks pretty sharp, I think. So, but again, the, the under three, it's a hobby using it. It's not a perfect machine. But I do think if you really, really build it very carefully and follow that uh, Fat Dragon Games Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors video building it, you'll have success. So look at this dinosaur I printed out. This thing, close up, high res. Do you see layer lines on it? Not really. It came out pretty great. And, you know, the teeth don't come out perfectly because I think one of the hardest things for an ender three to handle is tiny little pointy things but still you can look at them up here this again super duper close up and a little bit of scraping those teeth would look pretty perfect i didn't clean it up yet so it, you know for for a machine that's not a resin printer look at this this is pretty amazing detail pretty good now look at this from tabletop distance this model looks perfect you can't tell if that's fdm or resin now let me show you a close up of it and you'll be able to see hey it doesn't quite look like resin exactly but it doesn't also look like fdm and all i did was hit it with normal primer and then paint it i mean my my ender is pretty dialed in and i think that resolution if you're looking for tabletop quality in miniatures look at this i mean it's it's you're hard pressed to, to not tell to, to tell that's not resin here's here's a rat ogre again do you see layer lines on it and, and again, this is just hit with normal primer, nothing special, and then paint it up like I normally do. I mean, the little stitches on his back. Look how those printed out. They printed out so I could paint them. That's incredible detail of a $180 FDM printer. So now here's the, the rat ogre before I painted him. And next to this giant purple worm, which is all uh, printed off my Ender 3. You don't see any lines on it. It looks incredible. 
Uh, I don't know what to say. It, the, the printers, may, well, this was a funny one because this is what happens when you have your setting at, at two millimeter layer height instead of 0.2 and it prints out that weird thing. Here's the uh, a famous dwarf off Thingiverse, the dwarf merchant. Look at all the detail on this. The ropes came out great. Um, the bottles, the swords, the pots, the pans, the, the, the dwarf's face. I mean, the stitching on the bag here in the back, the stitching you know, on the book, the little things on the corners. I mean, this detail is off an Ender 3. This is off, you know, machine you get for, well, I got an Ender 3 Pro. Now, here's the Ender 3 Pro piece that I challenge you to tell me that th whether this is resin or FDM. You, I painted it up normally. Again, no special primer, just normal primer, normal Games Workshop Citadel paints, and you cannot tell that that is FDM printed. I challenge you. Again, this cracking. Looking in this picture, which is, again, effectively from a few inches away, you can see lines. I admit, like, you can definitely see lines here, but... You back up to tabletop distance, which I'm going to show you here. Tabletop distance, it just looks beautiful. I dropped this on my players in, in, a, in a dungeon cavern I had printed up on my Ender 3, and it looked just fabulous. Here's a piece of terrain I did once I was a little more dialed in. Water pouring out of a cave. This is from Fat Dragon Games. Uh, it's still not perfect. This was still early on in my printing career, but it already looks incredible. Those tiny little holes and imperfections you see, you could cover up like nothing. Again, here's from early on in my career before I was totally dialed in. This also, it's hard to tell that it's not resin. You know, you can tell a little bit by looking at the fangs and maybe edges of the fur. But again, here at tabletop distance, you couldn't tell in a million years. So the Ender 3 can, is capable of giving you uh, miniatures that aren't resin quality, but they're also pretty hard to tell apart. And if you clean them up nicely and you're a good painter, I really don't think you can tell. This green slab... This is off my ender. Look at the detail on the skull on his shoulder. It's beautiful. The, the little ball thing he's holding his hand with the ropes around it, it all came out, the skulls on the staff. I mean, this is some serious detail. Here's a, a model from the Artisan Guild, and look at, look at the detail on this. Again, this is off my ender 3. This is not from my resin printer. You know, I later printed it on my Photon, and it came out a little better, but this is pretty incredible figure from an ender 3. And again, I attribute most of this the fact that the Ender is an amazing machine, but also the fact that I built it very, very carefully. And by very carefully, I mean it took me an hour. But I built it watching the video from 3D uh, Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, which is a very great instructional video on how to on how to build your Ender. And if you build it all level and square, like look at this gelatinous cube. Again, this is off my Ender 3. You don't see any layer lines. Now, this one, admittedly, um, because I wanted to see what would happen, I took some sandpaper and I gave it a few rubs on all the exposed edges to see if I could smooth it out, which worked beautifully. Looks like resin. Uh, now it's in some cavern pieces I printed out, which also, th th I really bought my Ender 3 originally to print terrain. But before I had my resin printer, I used it, as you can see, to print a bunch of figures, which came out amazing. Again, this is off my Ender. Look at the detail. But for terrain is where it really shines because that's what I really wanted it for. And you'll see coming up, I'm going to start showing you some of the terrain pieces I printed out once I was dialed in. And you'll see some pretty, you think these figures are good. I mean, the terrain, which is much simpler to print, has a lot less detail in many respects, looks even better. So, again, this, is, this model for FDM, I think, is absolutely amazing. This dwarf, as you can see the size, slightly bigger than a quarter. Look at the detail the Ender captured. It captured the little leather straps on his shoulder pads. I mean, it's not perfect by any stretch, and again, and again, it doesn't compare to my Photon for this figure, but look at the nose, the beard, the mustache. I mean, if, if you're looking for table... Okay, now we're on to... Let me jump into my terrain. So if you look at this roof. This is, this is from the uh, City of Tarak Kickstarter, and look at that roof. It printed out almost flawlessly. You can barely tell. I mean, you look closely, you can see some lines. And again, but it's a high-res photo, and you're really close up to it. You back up two feet. You can't see it. And I'm going to show you a painted version of one of these houses, and you tell me if you know what it is. So, again, here's all the pieces for, and you can see the floor there needs like a, a two seconds of sanding. But here's another roof piece for it. Those holes are supposed to be there, by the way. They're sculpted. So here it is from tabletop distance. Looks immaculate. I, I, you know, and those trees, off my ender. The bush, off my ender. So everything in there except the figures are from the ender. And look how nice you can make your tabletop look with an ender three. And it, it complements having a resin printer. If you can have both, obviously, you have the best of both worlds. Figures off your, uh, your resin printer like a photon, and then all this terrain, which is too big for those resin printers, all this terrain off your ender. And look how capable the ender is, though. I mean, the, this, the house, the trees look 
just beautiful. Here's one of the houses that I painted up. And again, now that it's painted, you would think that was a resin model sitting in front of you. And, and the tree, look at the bushes. I mean, it all looks really, really good. And when I put this on my table for D&D &D night, my party goes nuts how good this stuff looks. They can't believe they're getting a play with 3D terrain that looks like this. So again, here's that house before I painted it. So you can see, again, it's it's off the ender. It's not going to be perfect, but painted up, it does look perfect. And I'm not even a good painter. I'm, I'm meh at best. But this just shows you what the Ender 3 can print. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm astounded by my Ender like I am by my Photon. Sometimes I'm astounded when I look at my, my Ender 3 prints. So here's a different house I printed up. Once I paint, I mean, look how good it looks unpainted. Once I paint, it's going to be phenomenal. And that, again, there's the zombie. It's FDM printed. And you can't tell. It's next to a resin figure. You can't tell which is resin, which is FDM, right? There's, there's no way to tell from this distance. That's how good the Ender 3 is when you dial it in. And yet it comes with frustrations. It, there will be times when your bed gets out of level and you have to level it. And sometimes even for me, that's still a challenge to get perfect because you have four leveling screws, you know. And it's a little... Okay, look at this tree and the leaves, both off the ender and looking friggin' amazing on the table. I, I don't even know what to say. When my ender pumps stuff like this out, I am so happy with that machine. Uh, this here, I just printed an extra set of canopy and changed the color on them. Now, I've, now I have a fall tree and a spring tree. And again, my ender, you can't see any lines. You're looking at a pretty close distance, and I think it looks pretty flawless. Again, if you hold it up an inch away from your eyes, you're going to see the lines. You're going to see some flaws. But who does that when they're gaming? I mean, these, these, these things you're printing at home, these are not off your ender or not be entered in a competition. They're for practical use. This bugbear is FDM printed, believe it or not. So that's off my ender three, just like the tree is. Look at that bugbear. The detail, you can see the ropes around the spear the teeth, the fangs, the spikes on the armor. That thing looks, again, close up, it doesn't look resin printed, but from more than a foot away, you actually can't tell the difference. Another beautiful tree. Look how nice this tree is. FDM printed. Just showing you more shots with the fall foliage uh, canopy on top of it. And and here's a picture of uh, one of the houses that I painted to look all run down and old, the walls. Here is a resin printed tent next to the Ender 3 printed tent right next to it. Here's an Ender 3 printed Hobgoblin. Look at the detail on this thing. I mean, and here's another one of the houses I painted up to look weathered and old. Again, off the Ender 3 with my Ender 3 zombie there. Here's that bugbear a little closer with the zombie. Again, can you tell he's FDM printed and not resin printed? Maybe from an inch away, but you get further away than that. And I'm telling you, my Ender 3 is pumping out figures and terrain that, that are just absolutely incredible. So in reviewing the machine, you've seen a lot of prints I've done. Obviously, my review is going to be, this thing's friggin' amazing. The caveat that comes with it, okay, here's a terrain piece with all the supports. See those little messy, oh, you look, that looks horrible. I peeled those supports off in 30 seconds, and this is what's left. Perfect. So the caveat, though, is it is a hobby unto itself. It takes time to print, takes time to dial it in, takes time to understand a little bit, supporting it, and how you should angle it, and all those good stuff. But when you do it, you get a machine that, very consistently pumps out very nice pieces uh, at a very, very low cost of operation. Here's the roof for a stable I'm working on. That last piece I showed you was part of the same stable. So I don't have, I have one piece on my printer now, so otherwise I'd show you the completed thing. I already know it's going to look amazing because every piece is coming off my ender looking like this. And unpainted, it already looks great. When I paint it up, it is going to look phenomenal. I can't wait to get it on my table. I've got some horses printed up off my photon to stick in the stables. It's going to look incredible. Uh, here's another part of that stable I printed up, and you can already see it's looking good. Once I assemble the rest of it, it's going to be just an amazing thing. So Ender 3, uh, just, you know, if you don't have one, you're thinking of getting one, get it. You cannot go wrong with the Ender 3. You do need time to operate it. You, you need time to make sure it's functional and that you understand how it really works. There are some upgrades you need for it, which I'd recommend the all-metal hot end. Uh, I'd recommend replacing the springs, like people say. But honestly, that's it. Those two are all I need to do to make my ender print like all these prints you've seen. So I don't really think it requires that much upgrades to be truly a, just an amazing machine that can pump out piece after piece after piece for you very consistently, very beautifully, like you're seeing here, and, and make you a very, very happy d and or whatever game you play. So that's my review. Uh, if you don't have one, you want one, go get one. If you're going to get one, please use the link 
uh, in my video because it doesn't cost you extra, but it'll help me out a little bit with the channel. So again, thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the review. Thanks, everybody.